The question of when you're ready for a facelift is dependent on your tolerance for an incision and if you're ready. Now generally it takes a couple years of you being disgusted and doing the Nora Ephraim I hate my neck. So some people just start with their neck because they're scared and they don't want an incision. You're best off doing a small incision facelift that starts in the back of the ear, goes inside, and hides in the hairline. You don't drive for a week, you wear an ugly mask for a week, and then your stitches are out and you're on the way to recovery with just a little bit of swelling after that. The hardest concept to get across to a patient about what a facelift does is the physics of what a facelift can do and the dream that the patient has, which is this. And they are two different animals. You can only fix the neck, the jawline, and a little bit of the lower marionettes with a facelift, which looks great, but we all want more. We all want more shoes, we all want more jewelry, we all want more clothes, we all want more lifting. And some people determine this is the first place to start, and other people decide this is another way to start. And the reason you can't get all of this is part of the jowl comes from your cheek drop. And that's why the best result comes if people either start with a lower face lift and get some filler or fat in their face, or start with the brow lift and cheek lift, and then later on address the lower face. And both the cheek and the facelift are gonna help with this gel. Probably one of my favorite things to do in all of cosmetic surgery is resurface the skin of the face, particularly the eyelids. By the time you're 35, you've got all these crinkles here and you've got crow's feet, you've invested in Botox, but you still don't like the fine wrinkles you're getting by 45. So you can just laser them away. Here at the Hughes Center, we have four different lasers for skin resurfacing. And for my darker skin patients, my men and my older patients, I like to do fractionated laser. It doesn't wipe out all the skin. It goes deep, but it leaves areas of normal skin to help you heal. There's also a way to do CO2 resurfacing where you don't dermabrade after each pass. So the laser acts like a bandage on your skin and you heal much better. It's also easier to take care of. The full-blown laser, for people that are really wrinkled, is gonna take seven to 10 days of downtime. You know, you, it's like skinning your knee. You never want it to scab, so you better be putting ointment on it and cold, cold soaks the first couple days and warm soaks after that. But in seven to 10 days, I've got you in makeup. Every time I do laser resurfacing or even any kind of lift, I wanna be there to support them. This is what's gonna happen. You know it's gonna be ugly for a couple of days, but then you start going crazy because it's not better after two days. So we want, want you to come in you know, every two to four days so that we can hold your hand, making sure everything is going right. There are no allergies to creams or no scabs because you're not cleaning it properly. So we have a pretty tight rein on you. I have a terrific staff. They're very caring. They hold your hand. Even though you think you look hideous, they tell you you're doing great. Even though you don't feel like they're telling the truth, they, they are telling the truth because this is how you're supposed to look. They know they support you as well as I support you. People talk about a total facelift. Part of it is lifting each part of the face and the neck. But if you want a three-dimensional facelift, you want to fill in the hollows that we get with age. So I prefer to do fat transfer from a little belly button neck and put it in the face. The next part is shrink wrap and tighten the skin. So for a total rejuvenation, lift, fill, polish. I speak locally and nationally about a lot of facial rejuvenation procedures. And one of the popular requests is detailed information about how I do fat transfers. When I go on a panel with a lot of other doctors that do it, and the questions come to the panel at the end, how much fat does each doctor put in a face? The average is always about nine or 10 cc's, but my average is 65. I fill in the temples, the forehead, the nose, the lids, the cheeks, the jawline, because we all start losing fat here, the chin, the marionettes, the nasolabial folds, 
And as opposed to many men, I don't forget the earlobe because that deflates and we all want our earrings to look good. I love fat transfer and you can put it in a lot of different places than the face. Come visit me, Dr. Susan Hughes, and my staff for a complimentary consultation. Enhance your natural beauty at the Hughes Center.